Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone, on another block chat. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being so kind and patient last week because we didn't come on a block chat. Why? Too many things were happening. We've been out of events and into events. We had um, a, a, a meetup, a Fibre meetup in Vienna to attend at the same time. So um, we said, let's update you this week, post launching of version 03 and post launching of uh, liquidity staking and, and many other uh, uh, interesting stuff that were happening. Uh, I will start with uh, with uh, welcoming uh, Dennis, uh, the new father to the block chat. So Dennis um, have have uh, just had a, um, a newborn, and uh, as you see, he's not stressed at all. Uh, look at his face. Uh, it's not stressful as a process. <laughs> and, and he had much happening at the same time. And um, actually, you have you had several newborns last week. Yeah, you had uh, business <laughs> newborns. You had uh, personal newborns. You had several. Uh, it Today, was, it's concentrating then as on the business yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, hi, hi, Bakram. I'm glad we're doing this uh, this week. Um, and um, hello to everybody uh, in our community as well. Yes, just um, like you said, last week uh, was quite eventful. Uh, we had um, many simultaneous events, and unfortunately, we had to, um, uh, let's say, um, forfeit our weekly show. And I, I believe, Makram, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I believe this was the first time in 46 weeks that we didn't have a block chat. Yes, uh, and actually we could have we could have had one, so we could have squeezed one, but what we said is, look, we have so much happening, it's better to update you this week. At the same time, if we squeeze one, we will sh maybe fall short in one of the events that we were attending, presenting Ocean Point and, and Block Square. So we said, let's do it the right way and let's let's uh, not do it and, and squeeze it in um, in a non-proper manner. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it was like either we do something um, halfway or better not better not do it. I think it's like you you try to do it as as well as possible, and we want to bring value to to everybody who's listening to us uh, on a weekly basis, um, and and not just waste your time. So um, yeah, we had the successful launch of Ocean Point uh, version zero three. Um, so with each new version, we're basically adding a crucial functionality that will serve on the long term um uh, when as we develop ocean point and with version 03 we added the so um long awaited um uh, staking for liquidity providers um and this is a way for us to promote growth of liquidity which i believe we have now surpassed uh like doubled in in less than two weeks time we have more than doubled the previous liquidity amount um and um I'm quite proud of this achievement as a community, as a DAO, uh, all in all. Uh, we It brought as well attention to, to some new members who joined in just recently. It was maybe the first time they bought uh, BST um, after researching, obviously, what, what we've done in the past couple of years. Um, and uh, yeah, and as you said, Makram, uh, in terms of newborns, um, through, well, yesterday, actually, um uh, i my my fourth child uh was born uh we months and i received another daughter um and uh, nara and so very very excited about it it was uh, in the middle of the of the night uh just as the the time here in europe uh passed on to 8th of march uh which is also the international women's day uh and uh and so uh now uh i'm joking that uh about two things i will never forget to buy flowers for the women in my in my life which are plenty uh, uh only one wife obviously <laughs> don't don't get me wrong um but well, the others uh, are girlfriends or <laughs> <laughs> only, 
<laughs> and uh, and the second part is uh, I uh, you know I hope for my my daughter to uh, to have uh, you know choose whatever career paths she wants just don't become a florist um, and uh, <laughs> if if you cherish your birthday. <laughs> Anyways, so back to Blocksquare and tokenization and DeFi and Ocean Point. Um, this, uh, this. Can I ask a question uh, here? Yeah. Because before we, we talk about things that are very interesting for our community and people who are already engaged and involved, let's define wh what does this mean? So let's define what is uh staking what's the liquidity pool uh why is it beneficial what does it benefit does it benefit uh, bst does it benefit block square as an ecosystem does it benefit ocean point as a DAO? where's the advantages and how does it work because the question of what is staking for people who have not been into um, the web3 world uh, that's a question that cannot be answered logically to them so can can we explain that please well i be, i believe that for people who are not in DeFi, right the 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 function of money is just one right if we look at fiat money the function of money is to generate more money period uh, if you don't have money you can't the only way of generating money is your time and and knowledge well, if you have money, you can add to it as well that money itself. Um, and that is a booster in a way of how you can make more money. Now, um, staking is similar to when you, when you use your money uh, on your bank account to um, deposit it for a specific purpose. That deposit might be a loan uh it might be uh which is usually the case so you may have, might um tie up a, uh, some money on your bank account you freeze it basically and you be, in a way you get interest on it you get interest on it because that money is being loaned to other other people right so the the, the bank can now have more working capital in a way to operate uh and to borrow from a central bank so with staking in DeFi, it's kind of similar as a concept, but it's not dollars or, or euros or pounds being involved in the process. There's no banks being involved in the process if it's done um, in, in the decentralized financial way. Um, so, it, but it involves tokens and cryptos. You might be um, staking uh, a cryptocurrency for a certain purpose, and you might be rewarded for, for that process, for providing that uh, service in a way. Um, the basic uh, staking terminology comes from um, the proof of stake mechanism on securing blockchains, uh, which is uh, opposite to Bitcoin's proof of work, which requires computational power with proof of stake, it means, okay, I'm, I'm betting a certain amount to validate blocks on the blockchain. And if I validate them you know, you know, uh, in a malicious way or differently than others, uh, so others don't confirm uh, what, uh, what I'm validating, what happens is that you might get penalized. But if you do it correctly, so if the math behind it or if, if, uh, if the results are correct, you will be rewarded for it. So it's, it's basically performing work in a way, but betting with, you know, collateralizing it with, with money uh, instead of uh, uh, another way. In the concept of staking liquidity tokens, what this means is on one side, you start um, contributing to a token ecosystem by providing liquidity on a decentralized exchange. Providing liquidity is important so that larger trades can happen. So people can sell larger amounts and buy larger amounts. The more liquidity, 
the less impact those trades have. And the problem of providing liquidity is that it is very risky and the rewards for it are very low. You earn 0.3% or so on each transaction based on the amount of liquidity you provide based on your share of liquidity. So it doesn't compensate well enough. And that is some for, for that risk that you're taking. And that is something that um, has been figured out in, in DeFi for a couple of years now. So what started um, moving people's money into providing liquidity for a specific token was something called um, liquidity mining. So liquidity mining is basically you provide liquidity into a pool and then you take those LP tokens, the liquidity provider tokens that define your position in that pool and you log them in. And when you log them in, you earn a reward token. Now, it was experimented many times and what happened was different models. So liquidity has been in the pool for a short period of time. The rewards were very lucrative, but not sustainable. Um, the mechanics of, uh, for that staking were, okay, sorry. I need to... Uh... Let me at this time explain to you what Dennis was saying in simple terms. So what you're doing here is similar to giving a fixed deposit to a bank yet with a caveat so today you go and you say um, i don't want to use this money in investments that i manage i don't want to invest this money in any other instrument or two i want to take this money and i want to give it to a third party now we're taking a bank so that it's the simplest form so that we don't complicate the example we put this money in the bank the bank takes the money gives you a return obviously what the bank is doing is investing this money now the bank can be lending this money to your neighbor collecting seven percent giving you four make a margin on it and on you go now that is the simplest form of it what dennis however is describing now and i'll go back to him so that uh, he can continue what he was defining is a further process beyond that so that process when it came to DeFi. Uh, was identified as non-profit uh, or rewarding enough because we know it's always risk versus reward. So if something is riskier, it should be more rewarding. And when they identified that, what Dennis will tell you about in a second happened. Please go ahead. All right. So sorry, but it was uh, I, I I had a call on my on my phone, <laughs> <laughs> which is also at the same time my camera. So when we're shooting block chats and I forgot to put it in airplane mode. Anyways, um, what's happening is to compensate for that risk, you get some reward token. And a lot of times that reward token, the underlying token that was rewarded, doesn't have any value actually. It didn't have any value. So it had speculative value or short-term value and there was short-term campaigns. So it was used in the wrong way. However, we wanted to create a model where we use the same mechanics that enabled a lot of liquidity to come to a project, but create a more long-term sustainable uh, way of doing it. And here's where um, we introduce something that enables you to boost your share of the rewards based on the time factor that you uh, through which you will be committing to provide liquidity for so what we're sure what what we introduced is something that can boost your share of the rewards for the longer that you decide to provide liquidity for and this mechanism mechanism enables you to basically say okay i'm confident in this project and I would like to provide liquidity for up to one year, which is how we define the maximum for this current uh, version 03 pool 
for ETH and BST that we have on Ocean Point. But the same mechanics can be applied then to other pools when we introduce um, stable coins as well, or pools with stable coins. And those can be longer periods of time. The reward ratios can be different. So we can use the same contract type in different many uh, in different uh, on different occasions. Now, this is important because now you can earn on top of providing liquidity. You can earn for uh, the time you provide that liquidity. And this compensates, this is on top of the 0.3% trading fee that, that you receive. And, and I think here, here the importance becomes, you know, but what is this BST, right? I'm, I'm getting a, a new cryptocurrency. Sorry, can I stop and, well, you there before block. you explain block square token? Can I stop you for yeah, a sure. second here? And, and again, re-emphasize, when you go to a financial institution today in, in our normal world, and you um tell the financial institution i want to put this deposit in the financial institution tells you the following there's terms that you can lock or allocate this deposit to you can lock it for a month for three months for six months for a year and sometimes for longer and obviously the benefit to the institution the longer you you lock it, the more flexibility they do have to manage that money within that period of time in loans or in different vehicles. Remember, they don't only invest in loans. Now, yes, a big part of their capital goes to loans, but there's others that go to operating businesses. There are other goes to assets, um, um, insurance uh, subsidiaries, and, and, and. So what the, what the um, uh, bank would do is they would tell you, if you lock it on for a month, you would get 1.2%. Uh, if you lock it in for three months, you would get 2% and you would get 4% if you lock it in for a year. Why? Because the longer you lock it in, the more benefit they have, the more benefit you'd have. It's something similar what Dennis is just describing. Now, before you go to BST, what I want to do is I want to share the, the a screen so that we can explain, if you don't mind, to people what is the what are the... Uh, the different kinds of pools that currently exist and will exist in the future. And then we explain block, block square token. What do you think? Yeah, sure. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. So let's, let's do, let's do this. So now we have in front of us, uh, the, the, okay. uh, the uh, ocean point app, and I'll leave you to explain it, uh, Dennis, and I'll go down for you so that you can uh, explain different pools. And I will start now uh, by talking about the governance pool which is the first yeah. pool that we launched. Yeah, you can you can uh, close it because you need to, uh, it doesn't show anything if if it if the wallet is not connected. So, um, sure. first of all, Ocean Point works with self custody. So we don't hold any uh, um, uh, no, uh, Makram, I thought just let me let me share it on my end. Maybe it's going to be easier. I thought know? that this is what you wanted to do, yeah. No, I wanted to um, I wanted to the the screen to be shared. Ah, okay, but, understood, uh, understood. But so that all the three pools are seen. But I, I've done it yes, now. Yes. All right. So um, we have this here. All right. So first of all, let me let me explain self custody. What what self custody is, and you know, probably people that that many that are listening to us know this already. But the important thing is we cannot touch any funds on your wallet. It yours to keep, you just connect it and then you decide what you do with that, with those funds. We don't operate those funds, you do, right? So that's first of all, you're not depositing money uh, onto our accounts. That's that's the first thing. The second part is whenever you choose that's to- sorry, That's engage, across all our ecosystem. Even if you go to a marketplace that operates exactly. on block square, uh, technology, yeah. self-custody is what we follow. Exactly. Now, the, the, the second part is these three pools that we have now uh, here on Ocean Point, all, of three, all three of them are different smart contracts that we developed for a specific purpose and functionality. Um, they are all designed in the same or similar way 
um, so that they're as, as much gas uh, efficient as possible, that they have auto compounding uh, built in, et cetera, et cetera. They have been all audited with our uh, auditing partner, Haken, um, all have a score uh, above uh, or close to 10. Um, so something between nine and 10 at least, uh, they're, in, they're somewhere on average. Um, so these three have different functionalities. Um, and let me start with the, the last one because that's what we were discussing before, right? Um, and this is the liquidity pool. This is now here, you see that there's 160K locked in uh, into that pool, um, which uh, means that people who provide liquidity on, on Uniswap, which is uh, larger the liquidity than this, a portion of those decided to go to Ocean Point and earn rewards for providing that service to the, to the BST community. Um, and, and this is essentially what you do. We, you engage with this liquidity pool contract for staking, you deposit um, the liquidity provider tokens in, and you decide for how long will, you will be doing it. Once those tokens are locked in the contract, nobody can touch them. The only way to withdraw those tokens is for you to wait for the period to end and click withdraw. And when you do that, you will also withdraw the, the BST that you've earned throughout that period of time. Currently, there's 250,000 BST de deposited into this pool every month. And this then related to the, the, the value that is locked in um, means that the APY is stratospheric. It's 170% uh, right now. So there's a big, big opportunity for people to start providing liquidity because the earning rate is just above and beyond, right? Obviously, this is going to change. The more people provide long-term liquidity, the more, uh, the harder it is uh, or the, the larger the value locked, the lower the APY. Why? Because well, the, the more token... it will be distributed per token, you have less exactly. uh, less bonus tokens, let's say, or less benefit tokens. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is the the the, the thing that we introduced uh, with with the beginning of last week, and we already have like. Uh, a certain amount of, of people engaging in, in this. Uh, I saw many who choose the one week, uh, one, one month, and, and many who choose the one year uh, period. So you can either select a no, no lock period, which means I stake and I can withdraw at any time. There's a security lock of 48 hours, but then after that, uh, you can withdraw whatever you want or you can decide to commit for a longer period of time and you get more, uh, a, a larger share of, of those 250,000 BST uh, each month. Um, and, and we were really surprised. It would be great to have like somebody in the community if they would just build a website um, and just compare the, the, the locks. So for how, how long a certain, like, a, like a, an analytics page where we would be able to see kind of uh, how long uh, uh, each each tranche of locks uh, is, how for how, how long period of time, and and the size of it is like uh, what's the total value lock for a year? We, how about if for... we announce this now? We say whoever uh, of the community builds this the best of such a page, okay? Yeah, uh, will come on a block chat and we'll talk to us and every one of our community about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, if somebody wants to build that type of page, um, uh, I, I believe uh, they can easily use uh, the APY from our subgraph to query the data, or uh, they can do it uh, through uh, through other other ways of, of uh, or other indexing uh, services that are able to query uh, on-chain data, but, uh, Perfectly. Um, let's invite them to blockchain. I mean, <laughs> good idea. Good idea. And then we have the other two pools, which is the asset pool and the governance pool. So the asset pool is an incentive program for real estate owners um, to tokenize real estate. That's that's it. 
Right now, that asset pool that we have there serves that purpose. And we have um, tokenized um, 52 or 53 million now uh, worth of real estate across different jurisdictions so far. Um, and I believe this is like the proof that that incentive actually works. Um, it brings people closer without taking much risk, uh, enabling them to earn a crypto uh, that's up and coming um, at a 6% uh apy which is not much in terms of dollar value but um i believe that many uh of uh, uh the real estate owners that that joined us will find in in a year or two that they made the right choice um and uh, they made the choice that maybe they didn't even expect to be so interesting and this that then gets us to um to asset pools in the future. Um, in the future, um, and that's in the near future, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have asset pools that um, enable anybody, not real estate owners, to stake tokenized real estate and earn uh, and earn VST while doing it. Um, we'll be uh, we'll you know we'll be presenting this in the coming weeks how this will going to be uh, will be played out. Um, and this implies as well uh, that our community will be able to purchase um, tokens uh, of selected real estate properties. Now, the governance pool is then the first pool that we launched, but the last one that we talk about today. And the governance pool is um, uh, the pool where our partners, but as well, larger community is able to single-sidedly earn BST by offering, again, another service. And that service is um, depositing BST into a smart contract and taking it away from idly staying uh, uh, and not producing any value for them uh, on a wallet uh, or uh, even you know uh, trading it on an exchange so it creates it creates certain sc scarcity uh, on the market but on the other side it generates a governance functionality um, for our DAO and this governance functionality you can look at it as a decision making uh, process that enables you to decide for instance if we add a new asset pool how much how will be we, uh, how will be uh, the rewards split between the four pools then? How much will be put as an incentive for people to, to, um, to buy into tokenized real estate? Um, so the governance part hasn't been much of a thing right now up until version 03, but after version 03, governance is fully uh it goes more towards decentralized governance so we'll be having more polls more listening to our community uh engaging it and practicing to to uh, develop an engaged um decentrally governed DAO. um and then having the governance board execute on those decisions that uh that will kind of create like uh referendum types of uh of decisions that need to be made among the whole community, not, not just an appointed, appointed uh, governance board. Perfect. So let's go back to what you were describing prior to us getting here. You asked a question that you wanted to answer. Please go back if you, if you don't mind. Um, I asked a question that I wanted to answer. Maybe uh, you can remind and me. And I which... stopped you. I blocked you. So you were talking about uh, li liquidity pools, and you said that now let's. Uh, uh, what is oh. this BST? Now let's tell people what is this BST. So we wanted to explain to oh, them yeah. BST, and I blocked you, and we jumped here. So oh. if you don't mind, okay. go back okay. there. Yeah. So, so BST. Many people. Uh, I mean, that's the the basic question, right? Is what is BST, or you know, what's the the model behind, uh, etc. And and because we get so many times the same question, I, I really wanted to create a valuable 
um, contribution uh, to our community. Um, and I hope I did. Um, so I, I posted today a, a thread that was in the making about tokenomics in general, but as well uh, describing tokenomics of, of BST as a, uh, as a token. Um, the importance of tokenomics is how how the economic model is is created um, and obviously there's certain factors or certain features that that, that really um, define uh, the success of a token or not and uh, and one of those is um, besides the how it is structured um, uh, in terms of uh, supply um, and distribution that's one one side but the other side is um, demand and usage or use case and i think that's even more important right and a lot of times it's really hard to describe for a project you know what's the use case um, because many times it it tries to complicate uh, because maybe there's no use case. So I believe that um, we can really simplify the narrative of the use case for, for BST. And it comes down to two, two, um, two uses that impact demand for BST. The first one is software, and the second one is real estate. Now, one might say, what does it mean software? Well, when you're a software company providing infrastructure or providing uh, a certain technology, um, you might model it out to be either rented um, or acquired. When it's rented, it's usually rented through a license that you either need to renew or it might be a lifetime license or maybe both. In the case of Blocksquare, we have both. We have a lifetime license to access the system, and we have a recurring uh, payment for, uh, let's say, usage of the infrastructure. So every time you tokenize a property, there's a payment. Every time uh, tokens, uh, or for every property that has been tokenized, there's another party that is then charged on a monthly basis. Um, uh, for uh, for that uh, for as long as the tokens have been issued uh, out there, um, there's down the line on the secondary market there as well a, a trade transaction fee. So this, if we simplified it, is our pricing model. And this pricing model. In other words, in other words, for everyone, this is how we make money. So those are the channels of income to the uh, company, but yet to the ecosystem as well. And here we'll talk about it. Um, and it's yes. very important, please. And so in 2017, we were researching tokens and how they might impact different verticals. I say that many times, but what I, I, I usually don't go in the details of is the basis of, of Blocksquare's token in the, in the end. So we figured out that you're, it's possible to tokenize a software license. And this is something actually that can be a, bit, a separate business even. It could be, you know, uh, you could, you could uh, uh, create that type of uh, business and provide uh, a tokenization of software licenses to, to, to others. Why not? I'm, I'm happy to, to, to help anybody who wants to, to run that kind of business. Um, but essentially, it comes down to saying, look, if you want to use our software, you can either pay or we will give you a certain discount. So you don't for, for every token that you hold. So this is a way how we tokenize the software licensing behind Blocksquare. And it's a very simple function, but it's a function that our partners, when they're considering launching launching a marketplace, they say, okay, so I could potentially run at zero cost on your software forever. And we're like, yeah, as long as you hold 100,000 staked BST. 
How much does that cost? Depends on the market. Why? Because BST might trade at 0 0.1 or $10. When it's at $10, this becomes really hard to acquire. Even when, you know, when it's at $1, it becomes a very expensive thing and it becomes better for them to basically just pay for it. But right now, it's everybody who holds BST has a fraction of that software license. Owns because part some... of the ecosystem, owns part of the economic rights behind the software license. Isn't exactly. So we're all about fractionalizing and tokenizing economic rights. And here you, you do. In other words, all the benefits. You remember when we talk tokenization of real estate assets, we say, the economic rights spread from the right to use to the right to earn from exactly the same you have the right to use and you have the right to earn from and and this is a company built for every holder to earn from imagine when microsoft was set up it allowed people to buy allowed them to buy shares but it's shares in the company imagine that allowed them to buy shares in the software and it, forever after you can use this software be it microsoft excel or office 365 for free as well as earn from all the licensing sales and incomes because it's not only licensing sales as dennis mentioned we make money even if the partner acquired the license at a full discount because he's a, a platinum member or a strategic partner or whatever yeah so we we still earn then you earn everyone in the ecosystem earns and basically, this is one side of BST usage is software. The other side is real estate. Now, real estate is, is a broad term, but here we're referring to real estate that gets locked into Ocean Point. But the functionality on real estate, we see it's wider than just what it's locked. We can really make it simpler to understand anything any assets that are brought on our infrastructure, they bring value to BST. Whether they're used within Ocean Point or they are just used through a marketplace partner or they are not even used, they're just sitting there doing nothing, but they have this potential option of tapping into our network. And every property we tokenize adds value ultimately to BST. So in economic terms, some, somebody might say, okay, but does it really, right? So let's go more in, in depth. Okay, a property is tokenized. How does it provide direct impact on BST? Ocean Point is a protocol where people can use it to ultimately use it to gain liquidity, to have a decentralized source of liquidity for their real estate assets. It's a subscription to partial liquidity without parting from your asset. You built your portfolio and, you know, like Markram, you always say, it's hard to build a portfolio, but then, you know, you get a new chance the, or a new opportunity, then suddenly you need to consider this binary thing, which is like, I sell the property or not. Now imagine this binary just goes away and you're like, just, okay, I'm going to do that deal. I'm just going to engage with Ocean Point. Right now, Ocean Point gives you that, uh, that option. And as soon as you engage that, you part with a portion of the revenues of your property or with, you know, and, and you give it to somebody else that somebody else might be Ocean Point or it might be individuals or companies that bought in while it's in the hands of the companies and, and the individuals that bought into the, the tokens you, that the property owner sold, the revenues and the value goes to them. But the value that is sold to Ocean Point is Ocean Points. And Ocean Point is governed by BST holders that have a governance functionality towards what happens with those revenues. Now, by default, we envision that those revenues are going to buy back BST from the market and distribute it to liquidity providers because we want to create a sustainable reward system for promoting long-term liquidity. But it also might 
be ruled by the community that BST is bought and burned and that it doesn't need to incentivize specific pool participants. Or it might be ruled by the community that BST is going to be just held by, by uh, just brought away from the market if it requires release back to the market, that might happen. So how is the can I, government... Can I explain this? Let me explain yes. this in a different way before you continue, Dennis. So yeah. if you're an investor in a, a, a blue chip stock today, um, you know that since a very long time, uh, most stocks stop distributing dividends or meaningful dividends. And most of the value you reap out by growth of, of uh, revenues, obviously with time, be it top line or bottom line, and a very important thing, share buybacks. So with share buybacks, there's less shares in circulation and there's more scarcity and thus the value of the company is distributed on less people. Yeah. So if, if you had 100,000 shares and today you have 90,000 shares and the people who used to or who own the 90,000 shares uh, represent the 100 percent of the ownership of that company and then the people who own 80,000, well, you burn another 10,000. In other words, in, in stocks, you buy back another 10,000. Here, the community can go for buying block square tokens and burning them. And when that happens, you're doing approximately a similar process. Can you define it that way? Is it approximately a similar process? It's approximately, it's like um, decreasing the share amount. So you're increasing, you're Kind of increasing share amount would be diluting every every owner in terms of their percentage um, decreasing it uh, moving it away from the market is basically diluting uh, not diluting is the opposite function um, and and here we're doing the same thing we're decreasing the supply of BST the only difference is that with stock the board the majority owners can at any time increase stock amount or decrease it obviously they might hurt themselves by doing so etc but there's this option of minting and burning in DeFi terms uh -huh, is always available um while with with cryptos uh with utility tokens um or not all of them but with bst concretely this is not an option the only option is to burn uh bst um by locking it in into a wormhole of, uh, uh, that's found on Ethereum, which is uh, an address uh, where it disappears, not disappears, but nobody can retrieve it from it anymore. So you're basically pushing it away. And the reason for it is that this is not implemented because BST is actually quite an old fella and that was deployed in 2018 as a contract and doesn't have all those upgrade abilities and all those fancy things that are are kind of modern today it just lucrative has accounting, exactly <laughs> the new standards yeah. of lucrative uh, lucrative uh, architecture if i would say within a token that makes it less valuable or more valuable doesn't matter are not present there yeah it's a simple token that um, that you can't use all those lucrative fancy ways of minting more. If you burn it, you can't remint those tokens. Done. No. Okay. Exactly. That's it. So, so I think with version zero four, uh, when we're gonna introduce um, uh, BSPT, so property token staking for uh, the larger community, you know, not just for the real estate owners. Um, what is going what's going to happen is it's going to introduce as a function to it or uh, or a consequence to it it's going to create a burn events for bsd um these are going to be obviously small burn events it's not like it's going to have a huge impact but it's just going to prove the concept for people that this is possible this is happening this is how it happens with a small amount or small value of of tokenized real estate and it's going to be uh, up to people's imagination where we can get in terms of total value um, under tokenization uh, on the on the protocol and um, and where bst might might come uh, or might get in the future uh, through that simple function and that wraps up the usage so software real estate that's it
that's the the simplest way of explaining uh, the, or the quickest way of explaining usage for for BSD. So you actually you have a diverse uh, level of uh, income channels if you are a block square token holder uh, because you are subject to uh, technology and you're subject to uh, real estate as an asset class at the same time. And those are, um, in general, uh, the, um, the, the dimensions that people like to go to when they're investing, if they are trying to diversify. That is a very interesting thing here. I believe we explained it pretty well today. We explained what is box square token, in other words, why is it valuable? And why did Dennis explain it? Because you'll be rewarded with block square token. In other words, you'll not be rewarded with an empty hollow token that we just minted out of thin air that will be valued at nothing. The only value it has today is value built on the theory of the next biggest fool who will come and buy it for higher or will mint it or, 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 or. This is a token. This is the, the token that allows you to become part of the community, the environment, the ecosystem, thus the income channels. Uh, now, we've explained that. We've explained uh, liquidity uh, uh, liquidity staking and the liquidity pool. We explained where we touched on the previous pools. Um, while we're doing that, I was reading some of the labels. You know we have labels similar to the label that says here share and here Q&A. Uh, and I was reading some of the labels because with time we created too many labels and we did not do housekeeping. So we, we, we edited some, we changed them, but we did not uh, uh, remove many of them. And I see those and that represents to me deliverables that the team have delivered over the past weeks and months. So I see a label that I've just edited that says version 03 is coming. Uh, 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 and the wait is is soon to be over. Uh, I see another one about version 02. I see another one about uh, we're getting very near to $50 million in uh, in asset tokenization. I see, uh, I see several of those, and I don't want to run you through all of them. I just want to say um, I'm, I'm so proud to be part of uh, the uh, team I am part of. And I'm so proud to be part of this community. And I believe every single person I see uh, is whenever he is a part of that community. But I want to give a big thank you to um, uh, every uh, member of the dev team, every member of uh, our our uh, team that is all around the world. Yeah, we're spread from Australia to uh, to uh, Ljubljana, and uh, we have team members in Dubai. We have team members um, in Cyprus. Between Cyprus and Dubai, we have team members. Um, in many parts of uh, Europe. And um, thank you to every single person who um, uh, believed in um, the, the um, uh, believed in what we're doing and who put the effort they put. Um, and, and there's members of the team, by the way, who really work on and on and on and never stop. And one of those, for example, is Dennis. Uh, the uh, ability of his, when I met Victor first, uh, Victor is, for those who don't know Victor, Victor is a, a co-founder at BlockSquare. Uh, he's the chief technology officer at BlockSquare. And he's someone who really understands technology. He, he comes from a family that really understands technology, innovators in that. Um, they own as a family business, Medius, which is a very successful, one of the best uh, software development uh, companies. and and. It's, it's the high end of software development. We're not talking here about developing a website for Macro. And uh, once I went and said, guys, I want to uh, up my uh, tech game, I said, go play somewhere else. <laughs> so, you're, you're not in the right playground. And, and Victor said, you know what? The amount of belief that is in people, similar to Dennis, leading a project where you have 10,000 frustrations a day and you're not betting on hype and it's really a long-term game, uh, that's huge. And I agree 100% with Victor. I believe that is huge. Somebody believing, having this much belief. Remember, in every discussion we do, there is inside a brainstorming 10,000 arguments 
that prove every single person right or wrong. And imagine you are discussing all of those lucrative ideas with people around you daily for them to prove you wrong, not for them to prove you right at all, because you don't want people around you who prove you right. And, and, and continuing pushing forward and getting a new idea and going back and rethinking it over and creating the architecture that would prove it right in a way or other, if you're able to. So um, big, big applause to the whole team, I believe, especially Dennis. And um, thank you to Julia, thank you to Daniel, Peter, um, Simon, Dite, that ambassador who runs all over the world talking block square. Uh, he does the job that I need to do sometimes. He does the job that many of us would do. Uh, he uh, represents uh, block square and, and he's the head of DeFi, by the way. So, so uh, he's, he's amazing. And, and uh, he pushes context to us and he, He's that enthusiastic about the, the vision. Thank you to everyone. Dennis, do you want to say anything else? Uh, because we've taken much longer than we promised people to take, but I believe it was interesting and it was full of details that people would want. Um, uh, do you want to say anything else before we close? No, just um, uh, the same the same as you, but I will add as well that, um, that I, I think a big thank you to our community as well. Um, I mean, you guys uh, help us push through, um, you know, not just going through the up times, it's, it's easy. Uh, when when you when things go down, uh, when you need to push through, uh, where be, there's more disbelief on around you than belief, uh, you need to somehow um, make it happen still. Uh, you need to find uh, meaning and energy uh, and, you you give us meaning and energy every day um and uh, and thank you so much last but not least i'll tell you we have been performing when eth was at 4000 we are performing when eth as oh, how much is eth today 1000 ish dollars yeah, 1. 1.5 1.5 1. 1. 1.6 1. somewhere exactly we will perform regardless of where's eth regardless of where is Bitcoin, uh, because again, we're a technology company, we're an infrastructure provider. At the same time, we are that kind of community. At the same time, we have a DAO backing us. Thank you to everyone who joined us on this session. For next session, by the way, there will be one of two very interesting things that we were debating today, because there's there's much that we wanted to update you on today, where we didn't know where to start. So we started with liquidity because it happened while we were absent from you. Next session, we will be talking about something very interesting, uh, which is we will perform for you an unstaking of an asset and withdrawal of the tokens. And uh, so we will either do this or we will have a very interesting guest on block chat next time. Exactly. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for everyone. Congrats, Dennis, for your newborn uh, to you and Mansa. You and I hope that, uh, by the way, Nara is an Arabic name, is it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. In, 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 no? But, yeah. Maybe, but it, uh, it's a very uncommon name here in Slovenia. Uh, there's yeah. not many. And uh, it also kind of, uh, our kids, uh, their names are Zak, uh, Nora, Kara, and now Nara. So uh, we kind of... Uh, By the way, it doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a meaning. Sorry, it doesn't have a meaning, Nara. No, it does. Nara it doesn't have any, any specific So meaning, no. Nura and Nara have meanings in Arabic. These are Arabic names. Dennis is with Arabic roots. This is what we discovered. By the way, I'm Lebanese. And Lebanese, we believe that um, every um, uh, smart person in the world uh, is Lebanese in a way or other. So uh, we, we can tell you about every leader and his Lebanese roots. By the way, it's at men, and many times it's, it's real. It's true because we have several ministers all over the world in other countries. We have several presidents that are with Lebanese roots. Uh, God bless you all. Have a good time and uh, enjoy uh, the rest of your week.